In part three of our lesson on the trigonometric functions, we're going to learn how to find the trig function values of the quadrantal angles. Now remember from an earlier lesson, the quadrantal angles are those angles whose terminal side lands on an axis. So going in the positive direction, that would be 0, 90, 180, 270, 360, etc. And we just learned that you can use any point on the terminal side of theta to find the trig function values. So what we're going to do is make a drawing for each angle and then pick a convenient point to use. So in this first one, theta is 0 degrees, which we know means the terminal side lands right here on the positive x-axis. And if we pick a convenient point there, probably the easiest one in the world to pick would be the point 1, 0. Now we can use that to find all the trig function values. So we already have x, we already have y, we just need r. We know r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared which in this case is going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 0 squared, which is the square root of 1, which is equal to 1. Now another way that you can think of finding r very easily in this problem is that r is just the distance from the origin to the point, and it's very easy to see that that distance is 1. So now we have x and y and r, so we can find all the trig function values. The sine of 0, we know by definition, is going to be y divided by r. Our y value is 0, r is 1, and 0 divided by 1 is 0. So the sine of 0 degrees is equal to 0. The cosine of 0 will be the x-coordinate, divided by r. x is equal to 1, r is equal to 1, so then that means the cosine of 0 is equal to 1. The tangent of 0 we know is y divided by x. Our y value is 0, our x value is 1, and 0 divided by 1 is 0. Next is cosecant of 0, which we know is r divided by y. So the r is 1 and y is 0. Now remember, dividing by 0 cannot be done, so 1 divided by 0 is undefined. And just a side note here, I know there are some people who make their zeros with this little diagonal line through it. So if you do that, you'll have to stop doing that because if you write this on your paper, that means undefined. If your answer is zero, then you have to write it like this. Now the secant of 0 we know is defined to be r divided by x, so we have 1 divided by 1, which is equal to 1. And the cotangent of 0 is x divided by y, so that's going to be 1 divided by 0, which is also undefined. So now we know the six trig function values when theta is equal to zero degrees. And notice in, in all of these, we have to make sure that we put the angle in there. This is the sine of zero degrees. I can't leave the zero degrees off. This is the cosine of zero degrees. It's important to have the angle in there. So be sure to avoid the common mistakes some students make 
by having the angle missing from their trig function notation. Next up is theta equals 90 degrees. It's CYU time, so pause the video, work the example on your own, then restart the video to check your answer. Okay, let's see how you did. For theta equals 90, we know that the terminal side is going to fall here on the positive y-axis. And probably the most convenient point to pick here would be the point 0, 1. Here's theta. So once again, pretty easy to see that r is going to equal 1. You could do the calculation of the square root of x squared plus y squared, and 0 squared plus 1 squared is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. So now sine of 90, we know is y over r. So that's going to be 1 over 1, which equals 1. Cosine of 90 is going to be x over r, which is 0 over 1 equals 0. The tangent of 90 is y over x, which is going to be 1 over 0, which is undefined. The cosecant of 90 is r divided by y, which is 1 over 1 equals 1. Secant of 90, r over x, which is 1 over 0, which is undefined. And finally, cotangent of 90, x over y, is equal to 0 over 1, which equals 0. And there's the six trig function values for 90 degrees. Next up is theta equals 180 degrees. Now we know 180 degrees falls on the negative x-axis, so theta will be over here. And the point we pick, probably a convenient one, would be negative 1, 0. Once again, pretty easy to see that r, the distance from the origin to the point, is going to be 1, not negative 1. So let's take a look at why that is. r, we know, is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, which is the square root of negative 1 squared plus 0 squared. Negative 1 squared is equal to 1, and of course 0 squared is 0. The square root of 1 is 1. So even though our angle is on the negative x-axis, r is equal to positive 1. And just a reminder from your trig definitions, you know the definition of r is that it is the square root of x squared plus y squared, where r is always positive. So now we're ready to use our trig definitions. The sine of 180 is going to be y over r, so we get 0 over 1 is equal to 0. Cosine of 180 will be x over r, so we get negative 1 over 1, which is negative 1. Tangent of 180, y over x is its definition, so we get 0 divided by negative 1, 
which is equal to zero, cosecant of 180 degrees will be R divided by the Y value, which is one divided by zero, so we know that means it will be undefined. The secant of 180 is the R value divided by the X value, which is one divided by negative one, which is negative one, and cotangent of 180, X over Y, which is negative one divided by zero, which is undefined. Next up is theta equals 270 degrees. It's CYU time, so pause the video, work the example on your own, then restart the video to check your answer. Okay, let's see how you did. When theta is 270 degrees, we know that that means its terminal side falls on the negative y-axis here. So there is theta equals 270. And a convenient point to pick here would be 0 comma negative 1. And once again, if you do the calculation for r, you discover you have 0 squared plus negative 1 squared, which is equal to the square root of 1, which is 1. So now, when we use our trig definitions, sine of 270 will be y over r, which is equal to negative 1 over 1, which is negative 1. Cosine of 270 is x over r, which is 0 over 1 equals 0. Tangent of 270, y over x, so we get negative 1 over 0, which is undefined. Cosecant of 270 is r divided by y. 1 over negative 1 equals negative 1. Secant of 270, r divided by x, which is 1 divided by 0, undefined. And cotangent of 270, x over y, which is 0, divided by negative 1, which is 0. Next, we're going to make a chart to summarize all the values we just found. You're going to use these values so often that it will benefit you to memorize them. So if you look back at what we did when theta was zero degrees, we discovered that the sine of zero is zero, the cosine is one, the tangent is zero, the cosecant is undefined, the secant is one, and the cotangent is undefined. At 90 degrees, we found out that the sine is 1, cosine is 0, the tangent is undefined, the cosecant is 1, the secant is undefined, and the cotangent is 0. At 180 degrees, we found that the sine of 180 is 0, cosine of 180 
is negative 1. The tangent is 0. The cosecant is undefined. The secant is negative 1. And the cotangent is also undefined. At 270 degrees, the sine is negative 1, cosine is 0, tangent is undefined, cosecant negative 1, secant undefined, and the cotangent is 0. Now, to fill in the 360 degree row, we don't really need to draw a picture and do any more work. Think about this. What row is 360 degrees going to be the same as? Yep, 0 degrees. So we can just copy that row right on down here. So we know that the sine of 360 degrees is going to be 0, the cosine is 1, tangent is 0, cosecant undefined, secant is 1, and the cotangent is undefined. So now you have a handy reference chart for all the trig function values of the quadrantal angles. In this next example, we have to find an expression for all possible values of theta for which tangent of theta is undefined. So let's refer back to our chart that we just made to summarize the quadrantal angle trig function values. And we see in the tangent theta column that tangent of theta is undefined at 90 degrees and at 270 degrees. Now we have to remember that there are infinitely many angles that are coterminal with 90. For example, if we went in the forward direction, if we went all the way around to 360 plus 90 more, we know that would be 450 degrees. And so we could go on and on, rotating more and more times. If we rotated in the negative direction, we know that this is coterminal with negative 270 degrees, and that could go on and on. Coming down here, 270 degrees, if we went all the way around and then again, right, then that would be 360, 450, 540, 630 in the positive direction and that could go on forever and ever and ever. And if we go in the negative direction, this is coterminal with negative 90 and then going on and on in the negative direction. So we can see right away there's going to be infinitely many angles for which tangent of theta is going to be undefined. Now we learned earlier that the way to handle infinitely many answers is we have to generate a formula. So we're going to let n equal an integer and if we let theta start at 90 degrees and then we notice that to get from this angle to the next one, all we had to do was add 180 degrees. Or if we were here and we wanted to go in the negative direction, we would subtract 180 degrees. And that's where the power of the integer comes in because it has the positives and the negatives. So then all the angles for which tangent theta will be undefined then are going to be theta equals 90 degrees plus 180 times n, where n is that integer.